looks like my watch we have about a minute left, but I think I'll go ahead and get us started today. It seems like the crowd has settled down. There wasn't a line left to get into the door. Uh, my name is Mark Harris, and I'm with the National Action Statistics Service. I'm the Director of Methodology. And I want to welcome you today uh, on behalf of our Administrator, Joe Riley, the USDA, and to the Jefferson Auditorium. And Joe, if you don't mind waving your hand, you're right. He's uh, always been supportive of the series, and our former administrator, Cynthia Clark, is here today, too. Cynthia, we're going to your hand. And so, anyway, we appreciate your support for this for the many years it's been going on. Uh, as you're aware, the Morris Hanson Lecture was established by the Washington Statistical Society in 1990 with a financial grant from West Staff. The series seeks to achieve a balance between the series, excuse me, theory, theory application, and policy to highlight the diverse, diversity of disciplines that inform the survey practice. The lecture was created uh, to honor Morris Hansen and a former West staff chairman of the board. His primary contributions to the survey sampling and related statistical methods during his long and distinguished career at the Census Bureau of West Staff established uh, many standards and methods mostly still in use for the uh, conducting of surveys. In 1996 and again in 2006, West had made additional financial contributions to Washington Statistical Society so the Hanson lecture, lecture series could continue. Today, we are pleased to have four members of the Hanson family with us, and they're down here on our front row. Uh, at least three of them are. The fourth one is soon to arrive. We have uh, Evelyn Allen and Morris Hanson's daughter, and her, her son, Dan Allen, and he will soon be here. And then we have Margaret Hanson and uh, his daughter-in-law and Heidi and Harrison, uh, his uh, grandfather. So, thank you guys for coming. You guys are always here. And we're here. Uh, just before we get started here, we have a few housekeeping rules, and uh, the first is eating and drinking in the uh, auditorium is forbidden. The second, uh, uh, please turn off your cell phones. So I'm going to take a moment. Turn mine off while you turn yours off, or at least the volume down. And then third, the restrooms are located in the fifth room, so that's just to my left, uh, just inside the hall. And uh, finally, uh, one additional thing that I need to say today is that uh, we're going to record the lecture series for food for We're going to record the lecture series and we will have a question and answer period. During the question and answer period, please come up to the mics and speak your question to the mic and that allows both the recording and the uh, lecturers to, and discussants to hear those questions. And, uh, and as most of you know, we have a reception at the conclusion of the, uh, the uh, lecture today, and it will be in the USDA patio, which is across the street. And our head of USDA security will come over and lead us across there. And we have to go very closely behind him. We all appreciate it, why security is so important to him. But basically, we're going to go out the door, go to the fifth wing, go down the basement, down to the third wing, and across and back up. And at the conclusion of the ceremony today, uh, we will uh, excuse you from the, the uh, 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 administration building, the Danielle Whitt administration building, free to exit on the front or the back. I encourage you, if you're going to be taking the subway, to enter on the front, and then just to the left is the subway station off the mall. I think it'll be the shortest, uh, shortest trip. So I think I've turned everything, so I'm going to turn the, the, uh, the podium over to our Kansas Committee Chair this year, Eric, so thank you. Thank you. 
a third year member of the committee serves as chair. Last year, that was John Chaika of Mathematica. This year, me. And next year, Barry Brownberg of the National Cancer Institute. The fourth member of the committee this year is Dr. Croyer of the Joint Program in Survey Methodology at the University of Maryland. Uh, next, I can introduce our newest committee member, that's Morgan Herp of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, who will soon uh, join the committee as John Chaika finishes his term. <coughs> uh, Morris Hansen was a longtime associate director for research and development at the U.S. Census Bureau, and after his retirement, joined West Staff, they become chairman of the board. He was a researcher and innovator in survey sampling methodology, and an enormously influential administrator of research and methodology in the federal statistical system. He was at different times president of the American Statistical Association and of the Institute of Mathematical Statistics. He was born in 1910 in Thermopolis, Wyoming. He graduated from the University of Wyoming County in 1934. In his later career, he had fruitful ties with two other powerhouse statisticians also from the University of Wyoming. W. Edwards Denning and Edward Bryan, the latter uh, was president and one of the founders of Westside. At the time of his graduation, he was sufficiently inspired uh, by a couple of courses he had taken in economic statistics to decide that he would make his career in statistics. His later training after he joined the Census Bureau, uh, the graduate school at the USDA and later at American University, uh, and, and he earned a master's degree at America in 1940. His career at the census involved him in an extensive series of the most basic and far-reaching new methodological developments that came to define its mission. In August 1937, Congress authorized a national voluntary census of the unemployed and partially un unemployed. The census was conducted in the fall of 1937, and the Census Bureau conducted a follow-on sample survey called the Enumerative Record Check Census, which the then 27-year-old Morris Hansen helped design. These were still the days when probability sampling and sample surveys for national statistics was brand new, and this pioneering national survey helped the idea gain acceptance. In 1941, Hansen became assistant chief of the Statistical Research Division of the Census and began a 27-year collaboration with William Horowitz on the development of finite population design-based sampling theory underlying what are now the standard basic survey methods. In 1953 came the publication of the two-volume book, Hansen, Horowitz, and Maddow, Sample Survey Methods and, and Theory, often called the Bible, that made the Statistical Research Division team, and particularly Morris Hansen himself, world famous. These methods were developed and applied in the Census Bureau's household surveys, and developed further for business and staff for establishing surveys. These ideas and applications to other national surveys were carried still farther during his second career at Westat after his retirement from census. The academic honors that Morris Hansen earned, fellowship in the ASA and IMS, elected membership in the National Academy of Sciences and AAAS, reflect the stature of his published research but cannot tell the whole story about it. We honor Morris Hansen as a unique figure who demonstrated as a research administrator the centrality of research to the federal agencies involved in sample surveys. Quality control, coverage evaluation, and the mathematically based design of the major surveys run by the Census Bureau, including the precursors of the long form census, the current population survey, and the census coverage surveys. Quoting from a 1996 biographical memoir, about Morris Hansen by Waxberg and Goldfield, the innovations under Morris's leadership radically changed census procedures that had been in effect for 150 years. Finally, I should mention as an indication of Hansen's leadership, the crucial technological innovations that Morris Hansen was instrumental in bringing to the Census Bureau and Federal Statistics. The electronic computer, the ENIAC, Mark reading electronic equipment for data conversion and entry, called FOSDIC, which stands for Film Optical Sensing Device for Input to Computers, the latter invented and developed jointly by the Census Bureau and the Bureau of Standards. The lecture series named for Morris Hansen has since 1991 
brought some of the brightest lights and survey sampling in this building, honoring Mark Morris Hansen with the variety and the depth of their ideas. With that, we turn our attention to today's distinguished speakers, and it's my pleasure to hand over the podium to today's program chair, Barry Gravard, to introduce the rest of the program. Thank you, Professor Steve Thompson. 